Hello everyone, so hopefully everything's going good. Sadly the laptop, its screen has started being a mutiny again, so whatever. <coughs> what I want to talk about today is very, very simple. DC Film Justice 102. So basically they have the dawn of the Justice League and they had something last night. I wasn't able to watch it because guess what? Freaking Agent Carter was on. So you guys got freaking slapped. But of course, it's like CW and ABC both got dissed. CW, I watched The Flash, of course. But on the other hand, ABC had the history of Captain America. That's what I'm going to watch after this. And then you had Agent Carter, which had, yeah, this right here that I had to skip. <coughs> Excuse me. Actually, no, I had to skip the first part that I watched, which was about League of Tomorrow, and now I have a nice little pamphlet, because I decided why not catalog it. So I'm cataloging a few things. I first started cataloging The Flash, and most likely down below you'll see the Tumblr post of all of The Flash characters, some interesting things, and everything else. So I'm doing a decent outline of all the metahumans. That's what I really would like to do, so that's what I'm doing. And now I'm doing League of of legends as well. league 11 yeah league of legends as well but what's really more important to talk about right now is justice league <clears throat> you got john g he admitted it too you had i think armin from comic book cast also mentioned it i kind of have to agree but me personally and i already did a freaking rant on it so uh, all I'm saying is that they shouldn't have been freaking damn wusses when it came to the plan of Green Lantern will be the start of the DC Universe and the movies. And like, yeah, go for it. And they're like, the oh, birds suck. Oh, damn it. Oh, my gosh. Look what they did to Green Lantern. Oh, my God. It's like, what? Don't listen to those dumbasses, all right? You're the ones who make the money. You're the ones who are in charge. Just listen to all their negativity, put into account, and in the sequel movie that you make of the Green Lantern, make it better. That's all you have to really do. Look at freaking Amazing Spider-Man. And again, here we go. We're going to the freaking rant I'm talking about. But anyways, Sony made the Amazing Spider-Man. Everyone said freaking bullcrap. It sucks. It's bullcrap. And what they did is listen to the fans and made the sequel. You should have did the same way. Follow suit. Just allow that movie, even though it's crummy, in quotations crummy, just use that movie to start you up and just build. Even though it's crappy foundation, quotations crappy, because the fans think it's crappy. Me, personally, I think it was a decent run. That's like a decent start. I mean, it wasn't like a big start like Iron Man, but at least you starting. That's the thing. It's like, at least you starting. Not like what you're doing right now. It's like, my gosh. Yeah, so it's like, at least you're starting. So just try to jump and jump and jump, all right? Don't do what you're doing right now, which is basically what you're doing is you're now basing it off the Superman series. You tried to get Batman into this. But the thing is, what's crazy is like, how the frick don't you want to have the new Batman, a.k.a. Robin, to be in this universe? That would have been kind of cool. You know, that would have been kind of cool. Maybe you could have, and they did, they were in the talks. Yeah, they were in the talks with the uh, original Batman. I forgot his name at this moment. But yeah, they were in talks with him. Oh, Christian Bale, that's it. They were in talks with him, but... It fell through. So you guys decided to reboot Batman and put him in the Superman universe. And not only that, but you decided to fit in one or two more characters. And it was like, oh my gosh. I mean, just notice what Marvel's doing. Notice Marvel's doing, and I enjoy actually pointing this out. And let me just put this on pause just in case they decide to say, screw you. Yeah, I'm watching it on on demand and on demand usually after a time says screw you We're going to freaking go back to the main screen, which is like what the frick I paused it I should come back to it easily, but instead you guys have to be jerks. I mean, let me just start it Pause it just in case they have to be total jerks. <laughs> okay, so This is amazing what Marvel did Marvel sneaked in characters and used those characters in the movies which was very 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 well done let's try this out 
in Iron Man 2. Well, technically, Iron Man 2, they had two people showing up. They had Black Widow, which that's the main character I basically spotlight on that. And you also have War Machine. That's two, but I actually just count Black Widow because Iron Man, um, Iron Man, War Machine, that's actually are in the same universe. So, of course, he'll show up eventually. But Black Widow was the extra that's like... And what's even crazier is that Wasp was actually supposed to be the person in it, not Black Widow. That was the first time ever the company said to, you know, the guy <laughs> and said, yeah, you shouldn't. Oh, Josh Whedon, that's it. Yeah, he's. they're like, yeah, you shouldn't put the Wasp in it. Which I personally would like to see what you would have done with the Wasp in Iron Man 2. And that means that Ant-Man would have been so set up that it would be like so cool, you know? But whatever. So anyways, they got Black Widow. That was an awesome move. Then we have to skip all the way to Thor, <clears throat> which Thor got Hawkeye, which I did some digging. Sadly, when it comes to it, Hawkeye was actually a bad guy to Iron Man. But hey, 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 it's all right. It's all right. You guys still did good. That was awesome. Yeah, they brought two, another character in and then they formed the Avengers with the two extra characters, which that was awesome. That was awesome. Captain America eventually got into it too with the sequel, which they actually brought in. Actually, technically, they brought in the Winter Soldier, but the Winter Soldier is not really a part of it just yet. They introduced him, but he wasn't. He was basically the bad guy. He wasn't actually like the comrade. The person that they brought in was the Falcon, which that was like awesome. That was like truly, truly awesome. Uh, let's see. Then after that, you have Age of Ultron. You brought in, <clears throat> excuse me, you brought in the Vision. Yeah, you did that. And then in Ant Man, surprisingly enough, in Ant Man, they brought in the Wasp, but they just hinted at it. Yeah, they hinted at it, but technically, he did bring her in. I think that's basically all. Yeah, that's all. Sadly, all of the ones, but that's kind of fun. It's like, if it's going to keep on going like that, that's going to be kind of fun to just see. The fact that you have Avenger characters that are entering in as minor characters or side-by-side -side characters in a previous movie before they show up in the Avengers, which is very, very cool. Just like what happened with Jessica Jones, which, of course, with Jessica Jones, you also have Luke Cage. But either way, they showed Luke Cage because... Uh, they could have just been like, ah, you know what, and yeah, we don't need Luke Cage in here. We could just show him later. No, they decided to put him in now, which is like, that's a smart move, especially since he's going to have now a TV show. And even crazier is that Daredevil is now going to have a nice little push in. So now they have freaking Punisher coming very soon within Daredevil. So, and what's even crazier is that Daredevil, I mean, the Punisher is even getting a series. Wow. You get a series. You get a series. You get a series. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention that in Civil War, you also have Black Panther showing up. Yeah, you have Black Panther showing up and you have Spider-Man showing up. But, of course, they are actually going to be legit since they're going to have movies very, very soon. With that said, this is just what I'm saying is that if DC would have just done what they were doing is that just have a side character in maybe your sequels. Yeah, that's what they do. It's like in sequels, they actually will have side characters. So it's like in the sequels of the movies, you should just have your side character and you should bring them on board, you know? Well, technically they are doing that with Batman, but Batman will have his own movie anyways. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. So their jump and rush to the Justice League could actually be a bit better. But it just depends. It's going to depend on what they do on Batman v Superman. And hopefully won't be rushed. And then their jump to getting to the Justice League. So it's going to be interesting how they're going to quick start that. Instead of doing what Marvel did. Which is they actually had four years to develop it. So, yeah. Well, I'm going to watch the rest of this, and then I'll give you a nice little bit in the other part. 
I forgot to mention, sorry, I forgot to mention when I actually saw DC for the first time, because that's what they asked Kevin Smith, so I'm going to ask this, answer the same question. Um, That's a good question. I think it was most likely Batman the Animated Series. Yeah, I think that was it. I think I saw a little bit when I was a kid. I wasn't really truly interested in it, but I think I did watch some of it. And as soon as, I think when I was six years old, that's when it really catched on. And I remember, and I still remember to this day, that Sub-Zero. And it's always on my list. It's still on my list, which is weird enough. It's like, gotta watch Sub-Zero. Gotta watch Sub-Zero. Gotta watch Sub-Zero. I'm like, but I watched Sub-Zero. You know how old it is now? It's like, you know how old I am? It's like, dude, it should be off the list. Gotta watch Sub-Zero. It's off the list! <laughs> but I saw Batman Superman Adventures. I I remember watching that. I was, remember watching that with my mom. Uh, let's see. I think the real thing that really got me into DC had to be Batman Beyond. Because, yeah, eventually all the movies and stuff. But to actually see that Batman... That was a new take, and that was awesome. That was the perfect idea to do. Um, also, Static Shock was a good idea, too, to actually get that from a comic, uh, another comic company, and made it their own. They bought it, and now they had their own. So Static Shock and Batman Beyond was like the real key things to actually get me to watch. And, of course, if you want to know about later times, later... The Batman series was a good series to watch as well. <clears throat> that was a teenager. So, yeah, that was a good one to watch. Um, the ones that they canceled recently are the ones that really, truly actually continue to get me. But, of course, I like stories. So, when I like stories, that means anything that could be good, most likely is good. As long as it's decently and... Shut the hell up over there! <laughs> decently animated if it's decently animated this decently scripted i will watch it but if it's not that good you know like the whole um spider man and Batman, that one if you type that on Google, youtube if they actually tried to make a series like that then yeah i wouldn't watch it anyways i'm gonna watch the thingy one thing I do have to talk about is this. It's just the fact of their idea of how they link Superman, Man of Steel, to Dawn of Justice. That is just awesome. They made lemons out of lemonade. They decided to make the whole thing, that whole fight with Zod, actually affect Gotham City. Which, that is just a smart move to get... Batman involved but of course like John G said I think it's a good idea and I liked his idea it was just the fact of yeah a Superman movie you how about a Batman movie let's see um when did yeah I think Man of Steel came out in 2012 right so yeah like a freaking four-year gap so if they were smart enough and quick enough and everything how about in 2014 to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Amazing Spider-Man 2, you bring a Batman movie in there and do exactly what John G. said. Well, technically, all you got to do is just basically make a Batman movie and then add it at the end of the movie, and it ends credits. You allow Batman to have simulations, and he was fighting those simulations, and then he has maybe a Superman hologram or maybe even a Superman dummy or, heck, a Superman picture, and he punched it and says, that's my next target or something like that. There you go. Kind of like what happened in Age of Ultron. It's like, dude, you guys missed the opportunity of a lifetime. What you could have done is get Claw to have his freaking hand now. Yeah, it's like, have the criminal already set up instead of like in the freaking Panther movie. Like Panther movie, you're going to have him get the Claw. You should have got him to have the Claw in the movie. So you'll be excited for the freaking black panther movie in 2000 not 2012 sorry 2015 yeah it was 2015 last year yeah so that's the idea the idea would be you have claw thinking about hmm ultron wanted to have this 
vibranium. So he creates a hand. He just creates one hand, right? And maybe even he was planning and did some, like, some ideas. Maybe even have a doctor with him. Maybe a Hydra person. And he's like, yeah, I created this hand the way that you thought and modified. And he's like, oh, really? Awesome. Let me try it. And there's a picture of Black Panther on the damn wall in the freaking newspaper clip. And he shoots it. That would be awesome. You see him. You see him with the claw. He charges it up. He shoots that picture. And we know what that means. Meaning that he might be coming after him. All right. One second. As for Joker's look, me personally, it's like I know Joker's look for a long time. But then 2005... In the Batman, they changed his look to something interesting. It's like, yeah, it was really interesting. And then they made me actually enjoy the character. I was okay with Joker as he was in the Batman series. As for this new Joker, I'm okay with him too. It's like, he's a new age Joker. He's a freaking crazy dude not only that but he's like a freaking gangster like oh man it's like i would figure if you actually walk down the street you, you could definitely call him like a true gangster or heck even a freaking gangster boss and that's what he really supposed to be and you know gangster bosses they have like cats on their stomachs they they delivered they delivered extremely well so, I am close to being done. Seven more minutes left. And my goodness, holy frick. They were actually already planning They planning it, but why didn't they just go with it? I mean, it looks like the Wonder Woman, maybe they filmed a few things. But it seems to me that the Wonder Woman movie could actually have been released already. Flash, it's an interesting take. I mean, sadly, it's redundant to the whole... You have a TV series based on it. I mean, yeah, most likely the killer is not Reverse Flash, of course. The killer is just a freaking damn killer. But I do have to say, the new look of Flash, the person they chose as Barry Allen, would be is going to be something interesting to watch. Um, Cyborg, it looks like that's not done, but they sure did cast for him. So they already have the main characters casted, which that's interesting. One thing I personally would say is hold back on Justice League. I mean, let all those movies come out, which I bet someone out there is going to say, yeah, that's what they're doing. But I'm just saying, just in case, let all of them be released. As soon as all of them are released, then put the Justice League in there. I'm just saying that will be good. Now we're on to the Green Lanterns. And just like what Armin from Comic Book Cast said, it's... The fact that there's so many Green Lanterns now. There really is so many Green Lanterns. Um, for me, personally, I guess, yeah. You, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who they could have chosen. So, I guess Hal Jordan again. But, I would say go with... Um, not Gardner. Not Guy Gardner. No, no. That's not a good idea. That, that's horrible. Go with the third person, which I can't remember his name right now. He had a lack of time being the Green Lantern, I think. But yeah, allow the third Green Lantern who of Earth to be him. Of course, yeah, you could actually pick Um, I forgot his name. What was his name? Man, I, I don't remember his name, but the black Green Lantern. Sorry to do that. Yeah, even I'm like, dude, what the frick, man? You know he has a name. It's like, yeah, I know he has a name, I just can't think of it right now. But still, I that guy would be cool to have that would be so awesome to have him. Anyways, I'm going to continue on. Let's see what happens at the end. So, coming up is just going to be the world premiere thing. And since lots of people already did, oh my gosh, no way, unbelievable. And I already saw it due to DC Entertainment, which is like, DC Entertainment, come on, you stupids. Freaking Marvel has it up very, very fast. It's like, as soon as they put it on freaking Jimmy Kimmel, even though... Jimmy Kimmel jumped on it first, and he has it there. Then Marvel jumped on it like a month, not a month, um, hour later or so, or next day. It's like, get with it. Stop delaying. 
Like, as soon as it airs, you should air it like an hour later. It's like, yeah, upload it to freaking damn YouTube an hour later so everyone can see instead of when I look at it, it's like, oh, I'm not late to the party at all. 3K? 3 grand people? Yeah, 3,000 people watched it? 3,000 plus? Yeah, I'm not late to the party at all. I would like to be late to the party, man. I'm sorry. I would like to be late to the party. I would like 1 million people have seen it, so I feel like, yeah. Yeah. But as for the Green Lantern, so the Green Lantern Core movie might be coming. Not a Green Lantern movie, Green Lantern Core. So either A, they're scared again about the whole what happened first time, or B, they decide to bring the whole Calvary in. Have all the Green Lanterns in a movie, or at least maybe like a couple of them in a the movie, show how they patrol and stuff, and then maybe for the setup for the Justice League movie, you'll have like one person from Earth is like, hey, we gotta get the dude from Earth, the Green Lantern from Earth needs to help these guys out, a threat is coming. It's like, oh, okay, I know just the person, and then they call him. That would be something cool. Well, anyways, I think we're gonna end it here, but... Oh, uh, I'll, I'll end it, but let me just see. So, to get Kevin Smith in here was awesome. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, yeah, the fact of the song they chose for Suicide Squad to introduce them. It's kind of like as bad as what Guardians of the Galaxy does, but of course it grows on you. And I can see why they chose that song. You decided not to spit in my eye. You didn't leave me to die. That that's those lines. I figured that's why they chose it. It's because it fits perfectly well with what they're doing, and does ask the question. But anyways, yeah, that's all. So thank you for watching, and hopefully it wasn't too boring for you. But yeah, I'm done. Have a great day.